Hello everyone, this is MSWS here. I am the creator of Nope, the anti cheat. And I'm just gonna be making a quick tutorial, not really quick actually, it's gonna be pretty in depth. It's gonna be a tutorial on the config for Nope. Recently, the config has gotten relatively complex. There are a lot of things that you can customize with Nope, and I think I should show you how to do some of those things. So we just go into the config. You can get to that by going to your plugins folder. Then going to nope config.yml. So we'll just be going top down. The first thing you see is config version. This is just for me. The server will automatically let you know this way whether or not you should reset your config. If it does tell you to, you probably should. If it doesn't tell you to, you should be fine. If you know what you're doing, you could look up online the current config with the correct version and add the stuff manually. I would only recommend that if you know what you're doing. So developers, you would know what to add and what to remove. This is simply set to true just because there's no reason for it to not be. If you set this to false, nope, will not work. Flags won't work. There's really no use for this. I don't recommend disabling this. If you just want to remove the plugin, it would be a lot easier. Nope supports two different ways of logging. The first one's going to be file. So for example, you go into your logs folder, which we don't have any yet. But when a player gets banned and then they log all of the stuff, the uh, in this case a file would be made. If you set this to haste bin, then a haste bin link will be created. This will also change the token a little bit. The token will just be hastebin.com forward slash and then the token. So it's a lot easier in that sense. The update checker will notify you when the when a update is available. I recommend I strongly recommend keeping this enabled. It is very useful. Permission is nope.message.update if you want to give that to your staff members. Bungie name override, this is mostly only for Bungie Court servers. If you for some reason want to replace the name or if it's not working for some reason, then you would set this here. It's useful for replacing the percent server placeholder. Also, if you want to use that and it's not Bungie Court. The band wave write is in ticks, keep that in mind. So 36,000 ticks would be, in order to calculate that, you just do 36,000. Divide by 20, that gets you the seconds. And then 1,800 seconds to minutes would be 30 minutes right there. So that means that this band wave by default would be 30 minutes in between band waves. And you set it to negative one to disable the band wave. Dev mode, debug mode, these are just both debugging and dev mode appropriately. Dev mode is you more, more useful for someone that wants to report a false flag or just see what someone's getting flagged for. Debug mode is mostly for me. It's very spammy. I don't recommend using using this. Ideally, both of these modes should be disabled. Dev mode might disable a few features, like you don't want to get kicked when you're in dev mode. Usually, you're trying to find something out. Webhooks are very useful. They allow you to they allow the plugin essentially to send messages to a webhook. So for this example, I set up a Discord webhook actually, where you can see. Uh, nope automatically sends cool messages so if you had a scaf discord and you wanted your staff members to be sent a message you could set that up pretty easily there are two links the first one is going to be the github link this is simply the values and examples you can look at this at your own free time the links are of course in the config this is a intro to webhooks this is mostly just to introduce people that don't understand what webhooks are to the idea of a webhook. Basically, you can send cool messages over the web. And in this case, it's mostly useful for Discord. This is actually an invalid color. What you would want to do in this case, and it says here, you can use color. Color cannot have any hexadecimal, which is unfortunate. You would have to type in the color value you wanted, which in this case, so this can be like a dark red. You would go here, paste it in, and then look for the good old decimal value, which is right here. Discord uses the decimal value, so you should replace that. Here you can just see the information you want to set up. You can set up custom fields, and this is what they would look like. So for example, the server field, you'd set the name of that to be server, percent server, inline, true. All of these placeholders you see are listed here. Placeholder API is also supported, so that's very useful. Uh, more information is just in these two links. 
it's very useful you can all we will go more into depth actually right now so this is the action configuration this is the meat of the configuration that you can do with nope there, these are the list of actions you can kick someone kick ban add to the band wave teleport them back send them a message send send everyone or someone with a specific permission a message run the commands as the player, run the console command, log something either to the file in game or to console. You can also log it to the webhook, that's how you would use the webhook. I recommend setting a delay for both logging to a file, logging to the webhook, and kicking. If you don't set a delay, for example kicking, every single time someone goes is over a violation number, they will get kicked immediately. So that if you don't understand that, like if a player gets over 100, the moment they get over 100, you'll get you'll kick them. If they join back, that they will remain at 100, so they'll just get constantly kicked. And that's why you add a delay so that they only get kicked every once a minute. Uh, here are the conditions. You can these are pretty self-explanatory actually. Less than, less than, equal to, not equal to, but equal to, greater than, equal to, or greater than. Uh, you can use VL, which is the player's violation level. Violation VL is basically how sure we are that someone's hacking. The higher the number, the more certain we are. TPS, ping. Very big note here, you should not use this in general. Players can spoof their own ping. If anything, you should use the TPS. The delay is just waiting X milliseconds before running the next action, which is important to note. All of these above, if these aren't matched none of the next actions will work for this one only if this one doesn't match as in if the next action if the next action that's been defined has not been has been run previously or too recently then only that next action will not run so all of the next actions will run though so the actions after the next action sorry this is a very useful not dev check basically if you wanted to only run certain commands if the server wasn't in dev mode then you would add that. This is our random percent. It will run the next actions 40% of the time. You could do 0 0.6, that would be 60%. Placeholders, obviously, most of these are self explanatory. Percent server, again, if you are not a Bungie Core server, you'd have to set this in the server override, otherwise, it will probably just use unknown server. These are the actions you can define per check. So, the basic structure that this works is mostly inspired by Node Sheet Plus, actually. It goes left to right and then top down so for example you can actually also specify custom commands so if something's if you see something here that isn't an action here it has to be a custom command here so for example we have basic log so the first action for we'll just use default for now for any category that isn't specified here it will just use default so the first action for default is to basic log and we see down here in the commands that basic log is specified as more custom commands, just all one, two, three, four, five, six. Six custom commands just run in order. So first we do a log, which is uh, we send a green message if the VL is within this amount, it's been more than 10 seconds, and we log it in game to all the staff members that they failed this check. We do e log, c log, f log, which is a file log. We log to the file that the player failed to check. And then every five seconds we log to the console that they also failed to check. The console one is mostly just to uh, avoid spam. After that, after the F log, we do a for log, which is just the same thing but dark red. And then we do a web log. And then if you look at web log, we make sure that it's not in developer mode. And then if the V violation level is more than 400, and then we only run this every 20 seconds max, because otherwise it would be very spammy. We log to flag example and then we specify an empty message because if you look up here in flag example, this is the webhook, we specify all of the necessary information already in the fields. So we don't need to send a message because the fields are already set to give all of the information. If you wanted to, you could add a message. You would do like this is the message and that would just add a description to the message sent, in including the embed. All of that was run by just basic log. So one command is very useful. It's essentially just command aliases. They were very powerful. V all over 20, so this means that none of these actions will run if the violation level was less than 20. If it is, then we cancel the action, whatever it was. 
So if someone was flying and we didn't have, yeah, if someone was flying, then we would teleport them back if the VL was over 20. If it's over 100, then we log into the file manually. The important distinction here is if we had a condition here that only logged it at specific times, this would basically bypass it. TPS is greater than 10, we make sure that the service TPS is greater than 10. If it is and the violation level is over 400, then we will kick them for irregular gameplay. Notice that this only happens if they go over 400 and it happens once a minute, which is 60 seconds. If they go over 800, then we add them to the ban wave. If they go over 1200 VL, then we custom ban them. And I define custom ban down here. Custom ban, we make sure that the server is not in dev mode. We log the ban first because if you if you ban them first and then log the ban, then the, then the player will be offline and then you won't be able to get any of the information because they'll be offline. So. So once we log their ban, which is up here, we tell the server basically that they got banned and we log to the file that we banned them. We also, if you look here, we log to the webhook, but using the ban example format. So instead of flag example, we would specify ban. And this is the difference. This is how you would distinguish between this type of message and this type of message. This is a flag message. This is a ban message. So we log the ban. And then the last command is just to ban the player for this amount of milliseconds and then for this reason. It's a log configuration, but you can do a lot with it. I will go ahead and do one more example. We'll go ahead and do B. The way that this works, once again, is default will be run if none of the other categories are specified. So if we wanted, for some reason, you wanted to allow scaffold, you could just do this. And this way, scaffold would not be run at all. No actions would be run for scaffold. If you wanted to only cancel it, you would add that. That would only cancel scaffold, so players wouldn't be able to allow it. I don't know why you would want to do that, but you could do that. So since speed is defined, if someone flags for speed, only these actions would be run. None of these actions, none of these actions, only the speed actions. So for speed, we do the same thing. At first, we log the basic stuff. We tell the staff members. We send the web message if it's more than 400, all that jazz. And here, if it's 400, log it, and then random cancel, which is another custom command. With an 80% chance every time this is called. So every time they flag for speed, they have an 80% chance of teleporting back. If their level is more than 100, then we will always teleport them back. If their level is eight, over 800, we add them to the band wave. And if their level is over 1200, we add them to the custom band, which is the same thing. So you can see, hopefully, how uh, extensive the configuration here can be. You can have custom commands, you can have console commands, you can log stuff, you can send a web probe, you can tell the player, hey, we think you're hacking, please stop. You could do that if you wanted. You can kick them if their ticks per second is, if the server's TPS is too low, you could kick them if their ping is too high. It's a lot of cool stuff. And the last is just very simple. This is the check configuration. By default, everything is enabled, obviously. If you wanted to disable a very specific check, you could do that. If you wanted to disable all of a certain category, you can also do that. So for example, if you wanted all movement checks to be disabled, which I strongly advise against, but you could, you could literally disable all movement checks by just saying this one to false. And no matter what, all the child categories would also be disabled. Same thing goes for like a very specific category. If you so you see we have four speed checks. If you just wanted to do disable all speed checks in general, you set this to false. And if you wanted to just, uh, specify a specific speed check, you would set this to false. And I'll go ahead and just show examples of all of this in, in game. So let's go ahead and hop in, in game. So we'll go we'll we'll go ahead and just test out speed for now. So speed at the moment should log it, cancel it with a random percent, cancel it if we go over, add to the bandwidth, and custom band. So at 2000, we should get, oh. <laughs> yeah, so that's about right. We, they log, it was logged, we canceled it, we just flagged it very quickly. So you can see when we try to join back that we got banned for that reason. It was the proper token. And this is the cool thing about the tokens also, the tokens actually mean something. If you go into your logs, you can see that these match up. Open the log, you can see that we flagged for speed. 
but basically it says here that we got banned for speed and the VL was 1261 which is greater than 1200 so that's why we got banned uh, nope automatically hooks into any band plugins you have so you would need to run the proper unban command for the specific plugin that you had let's go ahead and if we wanted to now if we wanted to for example only kick the person we could do basic log this will tell the staff members obviously if we only wanted to kick them no we so for now we'll go ahead and do the rnd cancel and then we'll do 300 cancel them constantly and then if they get over 500 then we'll i kick uh, actually, yeah, that should be it. So this will only kick the player. We will, they will never get banned, basically. I, I don't recommend saying this. Nope, usually is, yeah. So you can see now we're only getting kicked. We will never get banned. Oh, and you should probably set a delay to that also. If that isn't already set. Oh, no, yeah, I kick automatically has a delay. So yeah, look at that. Very useful. So you can see that we can't move. Should not have gone banned there actually. What speed basic log web log? Oh, it's a global, it's a global, it was a global sprint. So, global sprint is different actually. If you look here, you just have to specify it more. So, you can see global sprint is a different category. So, you just have to, if you wanted that, you would do that. And this will basically just apply the same thing for here. Let's say you wanted to kick the player for a different reason, you would type in kick. Weird. Man, you sprinting fast. Alright, so event basically this will kick me first, probably for regular sprint. And then the delay will come in so it won't run for another 60 seconds. So if we flag it enough, then the global sprint will come in. So we got kicked there. We won't get kicked again for another 50-ish seconds for a sprint specifically, but we will get kicked for global sprint. And then... So there's the irregular gameplay kick. And the global sprint kick should be coming in soon. Yeah, there we go. So I guess I just didn't reload the config correctly. Uh, but yeah, that was the nope config. It's very extensive, it's pretty cool, very useful. If you have any questions, go ahead and just join my Discord. The link will be in the description. You could make an issue on the GitHub also if you wanted. Uh, hopefully this was useful, and thanks for watching.